Assalamu alaikum. I'm Adil Heather, the Dean of the Aachen University Medical College. Today I'm here with Professor Mohammed Khurshid. Few individuals in education and healthcare have had the kind of enduring impact that Professor Khurshid has had. He was the Dean of our medical college for numerous years and over his four decades has had incredible contributions. I'll get into those details in a few minutes, but today we are celebrating the fact that Dr. Khurshid has now become the only third distinguished university professor at the Aachen University. Sir, how does that make you feel? You know, I am uh, overcome uh, by this uh, gesture of the university. I, I did whatever I did. Um, for, for my students, for the university, for the country. And uh, I, I, I have no words for, 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 for this uh, particular gesture of the university and I am thankful to it for uh, recognizing my efforts and, and recognizing me. I, I hope this also serves as a indicator to the rest of the faculty and our students that uh, this university is, is uh, is very open, it is uh, for everyone, they make an effort and everyone is recognized for whatever they do. You know what you said about being open is uh, just so true sir, as you, as you remember I was your student about 25 years ago and I, I still remember you teaching us pathology but I know that before you even came to AKU you were working and had a great life uh, overseas but then you chose to come back to Pakistan and Aachen. Could you tell us a little bit about that, that initial coming back and setting up the Department of Pathology as its first uh, chief? You know, uh, working in the West, uh, UK, in my case, uh, I'd achieved uh, the, the whatever, I had achieved the utmost. And, you know, looking at it, is, everything was established. There was no, there was no sort of, uh, uh, no, no, urge to do anything more and I've always wanted to come back to Pakistan to serve Pakistan uh, because I knew within my own field that there's a desperate need for people that's pathology and hematology there's a desperate need for people uh, to come and start the process because it was didn't even exist and uh, I was always looking for an opportunity where I would come back uh, it's very funny, but uh, when I wanted to come back, every time my parents would tell me, oh, things are not going well in Pakistan, so wait for a few more years. And so I waited for a few more years, but then this place came up. I came to Pakistan for a, uh, for a leave. I came here and, and, uh, and I met Dr. Vallani, okay? Dr. Vallani then showed me around. The School of Nursing had just started, and this place was being built. So I went back and then uh, discussed it with a few people and I thought if I wanted to go back to Pakistan, Pakistan to contribute, this may be my platform to do it. It was also opportunistic because I needed, I wasn't walking into something which was built or established, I needed to establish it. And so I think uh, retrospectively I made the right decision and a number of our chairs our graduates, PGME and UGME, <coughs> are opting to stay here and, do, and probably have a vision very similar to what I had and I wish them the best in that. Sir, thank you for that. Uh, for that. And um, speaking of vision, uh, when you came as the first chair for pathology, obviously nothing was built, just like you said. And today if you look at where the Department of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine is, is that it's the largest department uh, it has numerous full professors uh, and it has multiple residency and fellowship programs and service-wise it is the uh, you know reference lab for the country that they have more than 300 outlets from around the country uh, that come here to AKU largest volume the only cap accredited I mean every single thing that could be achieved uh, mashallah said the laboratory has achieved so you want to tell us about that vision and how did you make that happen over nearly three decades? You started it all. 
Yeah, it, this was a vision, uh, and uh, visions sometimes grow, and the visions had to be revised <laughs> as we went along. But initially, as I said, when I, I, I had always kept in touch with the medical scenario in Pakistan, especially pathology. When I came here, uh, I knew up to some extent what I had to do. There was no existing quality laboratory services in the city or the country. There was, for example, no stat laboratory services. There were no training programs in pathology. There's uh, very little research uh, uh, in, in, in pathology. The, as far as the academic staff was concerned, the ultimate was an MPhil. Uh, so I, I felt I had a lot to do. One is to firstly establish a good quality laboratory service and then to establish training programs, also institute research programs and then to develop linkages with local and international bodies. And fortunately, you know, I managed to establish that base. Uh, I think the, the uh, and also remember the laboratories are not just uh, relying on, on medical people, we also needed to develop an allied health uh, system which we did uh, and I'm glad you, you've taken it on now and developing it into a, a master's program. If one thing, my, if a vision which I had which was not fulfilled was to, to start an allied health program for various reasons. Good quality laboratory services instituted a, uh, a residency program, uh, got the college involved, had the FCPS recognized uh, at the FCPS in pathology, four subjects started uh, and uh, then also I got involved in the, the national associations and uh, slowly I got, uh, there was a clique of people, three or four people who had come back at about the same time as I had and we got together and we started to this national sort of uh, uh, movement towards developing of this speciality. And I must say that I think it has now, now come up. For example, the first time we did an FCPS in hematology, that we had one candidate. And I understand there are now 80 or 90 candidates <laughs> every time. My first batch, I call them the stars, uh, that they, they also took on the missions and contributed to this eventual development. Um, and if, if the laboratory has progressed, it is mainly because of the effort yeah. of our own trained people, uh, rather than people coming in from outside. So, Sergey, it is uh, not surprising that you, of course, are giving so much credit to the people that you've trained. And, mashallah, you have been, you know, uh, the chair of a department, then uh, chief medical officer, uh, associate dean for clinical affairs, and then, of course, Dean of the Medical College from 2003 to 2011. And just this incredible achievement of, of really bringing to life impact, just as Hanka, what we want for impact. But then, you're one of the very rare individuals that having been Dean, you went on to establish a new department of oncology. So can you tell us a little bit about that? Why on to establish a new department and how does a Dean go back to running a department? And in fact, you know, there was a uh, a, a committee which the, the board constituted about, uh, I think when I was the dean, in fact, uh, I've forgotten its exact name, you may have read the report, that recommended that there should be three or four specialities which should progress in this uh, institution. Oncology was one, uh, the neurology was another one, but this uh, uh, women's and child was another one. And so it was there that the university recognized it and they needed to, 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 to make sure that it progressed. This department has moved into not only creating it for, creating a niche for itself, but also to help other people, uh, also to help the speciality nationally. And uh, I think it will move forward. It's got a great future. I had the privilege of looking at uh, your previous work and. You, of course, are the epitome of a complete scholar. With uh, We all know about your administrative achievements in developing departments and the lab. Uh, we all know about your achievements in medical education. What I didn't know before uh, was your incredible amount of publications even before you got to AQ, like hundreds, uh, all the way back to, to the early 70s. Uh, can you maybe talk a little bit about uh, 
uh, where you see research is going at AKU and uh, research in Pakistan in general? You know, I think we, uh, this is another adaptation I had to make. My, when I came from UK, my interest was uh, leukemia and white cell function, neutrophil function, you know, which I thought I would continue here. But, uh, you know, to concentrate on one subject, uh, you need a lot of time. and. So I had to give that idea up and I had to adapt. And the adaptation which I, which I thought I would do was uh, what I call comparative uh, medicine or comparative or regional medicine, which was uh, to look at diseases in Pakistan from a Pakistani concept and compare them to the West. And you will be surprised how well that is received internationally. When they want to know, uh, what your leukemias are doing. They want to know how we respond to treat. So anyway, that was a field I chose. And then, of course, we didn't even have normal values for ourselves. Yeah. You know, so there were so many things which I, th which I took and got the PGMEs uh, involved. And uh, I think that kept me busy as far as that was concerned. But I think now uh, we have, we have uh, you know, even in the institution we had uh, always pick, picked up people to go into specifics like Zulfikar Bhutta, Anita Zedi. Uh, and then now I was very uh, glad to hear about uh, the CHS, uh, Dr. Uh, uh, the grant for the WHO sexual thing. Dr. Yes, uh, Sarah, Sarah yes, Salim. Yeah. She, was, she was also. So I think people have started picking these things up and going forward and that's what I think the future is also. The, this place is recognized, people are recognized, and, and uh, apart from this sort of research, uh, people should start getting, uh, should start picking up topics and start getting recognized uh, with, the, with community in mind, because that is always something which is uh, very attractive to, to, to international agencies. But I'm very happy to see that we we are proceeding in that direction from the figures you gave at the convocation. Yeah. Was, uh, uh, but we should not let faculty forget that, that research is part of what they part of their job. And I've always felt that if you were a teacher in an academic institution, it is taken for granted that you have to. Have to be you have to do. Your thinking is totally different from what the thinking of a physician seeing a patient is. I see a patient, I see a paper even. Yeah, you see a patient and you see a paper. Yes. That's a, such a great quote. Um, you know, when you, when, the way you're just describing this, uh, sir, is that, you know, AKU, our ethos of ICRA. So if you think about the impact you've had through laboratory medicine and oncology, the quality that it speaks from, of course, the cap recreation for the lab and so many other things, but I'm also hearing the relevance and access that you have uh, talked about so much and everything that you've uh, mentioned. Uh, maybe could you give us a little bit about your, uh, I remember being one of your students and uh, the way you would give a lecture would just put something in such an uh, easy perspective. You really could boil down things to, for a young student to understand them well. And then in the exams, uh, it was a very formal affair, but I remember it was a very fair affair that you, you know, asked very specific, very pertinent things and then you would take it into, maybe you could talk a little bit about your education philosophies and just how you uh, managed to inspire so many students. Turns out both the chair of oncology and the chair of pathology are your students uh, and so many others have been in the past. Uh, maybe a little bit about your educational philosophy and how you teach people. I'm not a textbook teacher or a lectures or something I always adapted to, to, to conceptual teaching and if you remember I, I always asked questions in between I never just came and gave a lecture and yeah, so, it was very interactive. so it was very interactive and our practicals are very designed on, on what now is problem oriented at big teaching but even at that stage the pathology practicals were actually uh, it, they were designed on page, patients presenting to the institution, okay, uh, to this place, so that you people would actually, as you go, if you saw some, if you saw a case with a pain in the abdomen, and then, you know, then tied it up to appendicitis, and then acute inflammation, it would stick in your mind. Mm -hmm. I could have come and given you a lecture on acute inflammation because 
not the same. So I think it was my approach to teaching is always conceptual, in that conceptual well, yeah. and uh, more uh, interactive, very interactive in fact. Uh, Sessions which I used to enjoy, I don't know if you remember them, was the microscopic sessions. Yes, for which sure. Which I had with the students, yes. uh, six or seven sitting together, looking at blood films yeah. and, and you know, just looking at a red cell, developing a whole sort of scenario. Discussion around it, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think that sort of teaching always impressed me and I've tried to bring this in, not at my individual level also, but at the level of the department. What would you say to yourself back in 1990 when you were uh, uh, running this department that was really up, upcoming as a faculty member. There are many faculty members who are uh, you know starting out their careers or find themselves in new uh, leadership opportunities. What what would you what advice would you give yourself uh, you know when you were starting out? You know I think we were uh, very fortunate. This place was very fortunate that the initial faculty appointees were totally committed to this place. And you'll be surprised to know anyway that three of us were class fellows. Okay? <laughs> Dr. Farad Mohsam, Dr. Javed Rizvi and myself. And, uh, so three department chairs. So pathology, Javed Rizvi from gynecology, uh, OB, and then Dr. Farad Mohsam from uh, surgery. Wow. And Mushtaq was just a one year senior to us. That's <laughs> a, so uh, I, apart from that, yeah. I think the professional background the, the initial chairs, the, cha the, the, the deeds, the associate deeds, a very good group of people. You know, no individual could do things, you know, it has to be a, a, a joint effort. And I think we had our differences, we had uh, forums where we could discuss those differences. And we had very good support from the Board of Trustees, including His Highness, mm -hmm. uh, who used to meet the faculty very frequently, you know in this lounge, which is yeah. the doctor's lounge here. So now, uh, Dr. Krishid, let's come towards the students. Uh, do you have a, a, any special advice to the students of today, postgrads or undergrads, about how they should be conducting themselves? Very different uh, scenario they're in now with all this online teaching uh, and a lot of self-directed. There's a lot of responsibility on them nowadays uh, to do this, a lot of stuff on their own. You know, I think the the from the trend I see in the university education systems now is the, the, the responsibility is more on students than on uh, the teachers. The teachers create a system that the students um, are supposed to 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 to, better, to 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 use it to their best, uh, with perhaps being tested occasionally to see if they're utilizing it. I give you a, a, a dean in the USA once told me about problem oriented teaching. He said, "You know what I'm worried about?" I said, "No." He said, "I'm worried about all the free time these students get, <laughs> and what they actually utilize it for." So I, I think the two programs also complement each other. One of the other things which I uh, I, I've always wanted to do, and, and in fact we had started doing it, was to, to, to use the PGMEs as teachers for yes. UGMEs, okay? I don't know if you remember, this, there used to be a lot of this. And in fact, I'd asked Ruxada to start a program for, for training residents as teachers. Yes. Uh, so that they would know what the curriculums are, what the teaching methodologies are. So when they interacted with students, they, they knew what they were doing rather than this. So that interaction, I think, is very important because many times the PGMEs are also role models for UGMEs. Okay? Uh, and uh, they fixate on, on, a, on a resident who's very good and try and sort of do what he wants. That's, that model also has built up in this place. I have not, there used to be when in Dow, for example, when the few student numbers were very less, there used to be that sort of model. But here it, it, it developed. Dr. Krasid, I want to uh, uh, you know, ask you a few sort of rapid questions here uh, for everybody who gets to watch this. Uh, when you were a medical student, what's your favorite memory from when you were a medical student? You know, I have a lot of favorites. Man. As a medical student, uh, my favorite memory was I got elected as president of uh, the Dow Medical College students. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, 
and uh, that in, in, if, that's it, incredible it's such a large body. student body you're yes. president of that and that was something which was uh, at that time was uh, uh, seen as a great achievement yeah. you know let me ask you uh, in your mind what would have been the most consequential decision that you made when you were dean when you were the dean you know you had to make a lot of decisions yes. let me tell you something which i think and i'm going to be frank i think that the dean and the ceo has to work very closely together in my time the dean was the chief medical officer faculty officer and Nadeem Khan and I always consulted each other and I had a lot more say in the institution, in the hospital, than what I think is currently, currently there. And therefore things worked very smoothly. But I let, uh, you know, so we, for example, developing new services, yes. uh, appointing people, even appointing administrative staff, research, all this we interacted with each other a lot. Okay, so I think it was all one of the achievements I would then say was this creation of a model to administer both the uh, hospital and the medical college to so see that it is working closely together which I think you are attempting to do both of you are attempting to do now. Uh, you know if you look at the PMDC regulation they say it is the dean who should be uh, the principal who should be yeah. the who should look after the place. Okay. So I think the, this, this interaction is very important. I, I'm very happy to see the, 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 the dean and CEO now working together. So the, whatever service is developed, is developed with research, quality, and service in mind. You know, that was the intention. Well, I, I'm so grateful for your, uh, you know, recognizing that. Um, you know, you, um, Dr. Khurshid, I remember our conversation and uh, um, you said, look, Adil, I'm not going to uh, get be involved administratively, although you're very kind that you always give us good, good advice whenever I come to you. Uh, but you've chosen to continue to practice clinically. And, and of course, you're a source of great advice to all the clinicians. And you're so kind that you mentor them and you sp st still spend time. Uh, and we're so grateful for that. But what do you see yourself doing for looking forward? You know, I like clinical work. It's something I've missed doing when I, I've always done clinical work, but not with the full-time attention I do now. Uh, so I think what I, I see myself doing is, is to continue with my clinical work, uh, mentoring, and, and keep a hand in research, and also in the national uh, sort of uh, field of hematology and pathology. My main focus is, again, will be on, 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 my, on teaching, mentoring, and whatever I can do for this institution. Because I still give number one priority to AKU and make sure that, you, that we keep up and we are also recognized nationally, not just uh, within ourselves. Yes. This is another thing I have always felt that some of our, our faculty members need to make efforts to get recognized nationally. Yes. You know? uh, and not just be happy because I, you think they're a great faculty member. I think we should make an effort on that. Yeah. Uh, you know, I couldn't agree with you more. And uh, uh, the work that we're doing with the Pakistan Medical Commission yeah, I mean, and that's, uh, yes. is very, uh, very, very important. And I think through COVID, uh, I think AKU has been able to really Which is good. establish itself as a national leader and partner uh, with, the, with the government. So finally, uh, uh, Dr. Krishid, uh, we're so thrilled for you to receive uh, this incredible honor of being the uh, Distinguished University uh, Professor. Uh, any parting thoughts or any hopes and wishes for the university? I wish, uh, yes, my, my wishes are always for the university. I think it is going up and it should go up and I need and I, I hope that uh, our undergraduates and our postgraduates will continue to play a part in its development. They don't have to be on site. They can be sitting in America or UK or any, or Lahore or elsewhere and still continue to pay, play a part. In, because the institution needs that. They need their uh, alumni to, 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 
to, to, to try and project the university in whatever way they can, you know. They can help with research, they can help with teaching, they can help with service, they can help with uh, donations or whatever it is. Every little bit contributes and uh, no one should be said, and no one should be differentiated on the amount of, of work they get. And I, I, again, I see that an effort is being made, uh, and now especially that two alumni are there, uh, the alumni will listen to them. <laughs> so I, I, I think that that's the direction we need to take, and we also need to build friends. Yeah. And this is why I'm very happy that, you know, PMDC is something which I started attending regularly, contributing, and it has paid off. You are now looking after the, 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 the academic side. Yeah. And I think it's important to continue in yeah. that direction also. Uh, so the university uh, nationally, then internationally is something I think we 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 will be recognized for our research. That's the uh, and that we have created we or we have produced one or two people who've done that. But I wish more people would come through. They will come through. I think you know it, it takes a long time for universities to establish themselves, they will come through. Some some stage, one of us will get a Nobel Prize. Get a Nobel <laughs> Prize. <laughs> Dr. Rashid, we've seen a, uh, with our new president, Soleiman Shahabuddin, uh, and the provost, we've seen a, a new interest to really integrate AKU with the AKDN institutions to expand its footprint and really take advantage of all the other AKDN partners uh, that we have, especially the Aachen Health Services, uh, and all the rest. Uh, what are your views and thoughts on this? You know, I, I, I am always a big believer in, in taking advantage of whatever uh, strengths you have. Okay? And I've always seen AKDN as, as something we can uh, uh, see us help, uh, or help us or, you know, or, or interact with us. The, in talking specifically of uh, the Aga Khan Health Services uh, Network, I think we should, that is a great opportunity, or we have a great opportunity to, to interact with them and create a health system. Um, we can uh, use two countries or three countries as a model, in fact, and this, uh, this will have a universal impact in Africa, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. Well, couldn't be a better note to, to, uh, to end this. Thank you so much, Dr. Krishid, for your, your giving us time today. And I'm sure many people will be just as inspired as I am by spending this time with you. Thank you so much. Thank you.